This next sample deals with binding converters. So before I show you it running, I want you to have an idea of what the raw value of the data looks like. So I have a model here, and this is modeling a guitar. So the make is Gibson, the model is SG. If you've ever uh, been a fan of ACDC, this is the type of guitar that Angus Young uses. So it's uh, an electric guitar, product type is ELEC. And we're saying that this store maybe has a quantity of four on them. So let's run it now. And you can see that uh, here's the data member, here's the raw value, and here's the converted value. So the make and model, those aren't converted. But if I want a full product name, that's not in the, the model itself. I've created a converter that concatenates these together and sticks a colon between them. The product type, it has this code here of ELEC, but that's not really good for the user to look at. I want to expand that out and make this electric guitar. And then there's a business rule that says if the quantity for any given guitar is under, say, 5, then that quantity is shown with a red background. So this doesn't necessarily change the raw value itself of the quantity, but rather has a binding converter applied to it so that I know which CSS class to apply to the element it's being bound to in case that business rule is fulfilled. All right, let's go back to the code now. So again, there's the model, the raw values that we're working with. So then I'm creating a view model and the model property of view model is uh, referring to the model itself. Then I'm creating a, a function here called product name converter. And that's being created as a converter by calling the function of winjs.binding.converter. And then the function definition happens within the call to that function. So here what I'm doing is I'm just concatenating the two values together, model.make, add in the colon, model.model, and returning the value. So now that I have product name converter, I can pass in the model, and then I can get back the full product name. Now there's a lot of different ways you can construct your view models. So what I've chosen to do here is to keep a reference to the entire model itself. Sometimes you might want to flatten it down more, and maybe within your view model you would just have make and model and product type, maybe doing some, some of the replication there. But what's valuable about using this approach, at least in this instance here, is that when I have access to the entire model, it makes it very easy to concatenate these two together. If it was flattened out within the view model, I would have a difficult time trying to access the, the two values of make and model in order to create the full product name converter. So this works out very well in this instance. For the product type converter, I'm creating a new converter and I'm saying, well, if it doesn't fulfill any of my rules, then I'll just return unknown. But if the product type is equal to electric, then I'll expand that out and call it electric. If the product type is ACOU for acoustic, then the return value is acoustic. And then before I send all that back up, I'm just taking the type and appending on guitar to it. So it makes it very easy to take something like a code and turn that into something that's a little more digestible for the end user. For my business rule, I have the quantity threshold converter, and I'm taking a look at the quantity as it's being passed into this converter. And here's my business rule being executed. If quantity is less than five, then my return value is critical. And this, this critical is really just a CSS class name. And you'll see that when I'm binding it into the HTML, how that all works out together. So here I'm just defining the view model as a namespace. And then in the ready function, I'm doing process all. Here in this case, I'm doing an actual selection of the order summary of where I want this information to go, and then passing in the view model. So the markup here is just a little bit more involved than what you've seen in the past, but uh, it's just an extension of the same type of binding syntax you've seen. So here I'm just creating the table. This is my header row so that everything shows up correctly. Normally in a Windows Store application, you probably wouldn't use a table like this, but I figured this was the easiest way to demonstrate what I was trying to show you. So for make, I have a span here and I'm binding it to the model.make, and that goes into the inner text. Model, same thing. These are non-converted values. It's just straight away binding. Now for full product name, remember, I want to uh, pass in the model and get back that full product name. So the syntax for the, the converter is to say, here's the element's property that I'm binding to, 
This is the data member that's being passed in the converter, and then a space, and then the fully qualified name of that converter. Now, you could have converters that live outside of your view model, because all you're doing is passing in this value directly into that function by value. So there's no requirement that they have to be within your view model. You can create a series of converters and use them over and over again. To keep things simple, I went ahead and included it in this view model. But, but this illustrates that if you create a namespace, you can put those converters anywhere and have access to them while you're doing your binding. And then I'm doing the same thing down here for product type. For the just the span here, I'm binding to product type. And then for the converted value, I'm passing in model.productType. So the product type value goes into the converter and then I get back whether it's an electric or acoustic guitar. And the exact same thing here with quantity. Now I'm doing two different things here with quantity. I'm setting the inner text equal to model.quantity. But then for my converter, I don't want to change the value necessarily. What I want to do is set the CSS class. And since we're binding in JavaScript, you have to use the JavaScript safe name for class, which is class name. And then I pass in model.quantity, space, and then the converter, quantity threshold converter. And remember, that returns either critical or nothing if the value doesn't fulfill the, the business rule. So I'll come back here and change the value of my quantity, say, to 10. So now everything should be fine, and I shouldn't get that CSS class being provided. And now the table doesn't have the red background. So binding converters add a lot of flexibility of how you can shape the data before it finally gets bound up to the UI.